Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Kayvon Kay, who is up in a what, slightly chillier Canada, is it? Yes, in Canada, Vancouver, yes. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. And uh, Kayvon is a master of sales and closing, expert keynote speaker and creator of the one call closer methodology uh, from being Canada's number one pharmaceutical sales rep to creating a million dollar coaching, co a multi-million dollar coaching company. Kayvon has a range of skills centered within the art of sales. And what we're going to talk about today is the power of connection in sales questions. And uh, Kayvon, right? So everybody, everybody in sales knows that they need to ask good questions, right? Yeah. And questions are the foundation of any, you know, sales interaction but when you say connection the power of connection in sales questions what's different about questions that connect and questions that don't yeah so it's it's misleading because it's not about the connection questions though so that's easy mm -hmm. it's actually about the real connection the most important sale uh, any salesperson will ever have to have and that's mm -hmm. the sale of themselves the connection is the connection they have with themselves so like you said, everybody knows it's easy to ask questions and everybody know any good salesperson knows that I would beg to differ because I know a lot of salespeople that don't realize how important questions are. But the reality is, is in order to be effective with the questions you ask, you have to be so connected to who you are first. And my biggest thing that I always tell people is you can have all the tricks, all the tactics, you can have all the one liners, the objection handlers, all the stuff that people teach. But if you're not actually truly connected to yourself, none of that actually matters. So what does that actually mean by connected to yourself? Really meaning understanding who you are, understanding what you represent, not just your product or your solution or your service, mm -hmm. but bigger than that. And then being able to bring that type of energy, because I believe sales is a transference of energy and connection. The energy you bring is the most important but you won't be able to bring any energy if you're not truly connected to who you are. Showing right. up, being your best self, understanding why you're there. You're not there to collect the commission, you're there for the mission. If you make it about the prospect, you'll always end up on the bottom. If you make yeah. it about yourself, you'll, make, you'll end up, sorry. If you make it about the prospect, you'll end up on top. If you make it about yourself, you end up on the bottom. And too many sales reps I see is they just try to come in with tactics and they don't actually really care to listen to the prospect. Mm -hmm. And I say this, when you're really good, you're not just listening to the prospect, you're listening to what the prospect's not saying. Right, right, right. So um, when you say, you know, connected to yourself, because let's let's be honest about sales, like a lot of people default into sales yeah. uh, because, you know, they, they perceive that they can't get another job or whatever. So there's a lot of people who are in sales who didn't really want to be in sales in the first place. We also um, have suffered this pervasive, like popular yes. culture saying like, oh, salespeople are horrible and all that. Uh, and so, number one, you may be you may be doing a job that you didn't really want to do in the first place, and all the feedback you get from e external feedback is yeah. like you're a salesperson. So you're already already you're there's a conflict. So I mean, part of it is actually deciding, you know, okay, I'm going to be in sales. Sales is great. It's developing. Yeah. It's delivering a service or whatever. But tell me a little bit more about how you need to uncover your why and get comfortable yeah. and comfortable embrace and passionate about what you're doing. Well, I'm going to say this, there's no such thing as being half pregnant. I've never met a half pregnant woman. So mm -hmm. I'll never meet a half salesperson who's actually done good. And what I mean by that is you'll see these people, like you said, maybe they got put into sales because they feel like they have to, you should be grateful that you've even been able to be exposed to sales because everything you want in your life is a sale. Everything you mm -hmm. get is commission. And the fact is, no matter what job you are, whether you're leading the company or the CEO of the company, if you're leading your family, you are always selling someone your ideas. You're selling them something about your thoughts. Now, for me, I don't look at sales as sales, slimy, all that stuff. Sure, mm -hmm. if you're an 80 salesperson or if you're you know going down that road, but the sales that I do, we're, we're solution orientated. We're actually, I look at myself as a doctor. Because my job is to make sure that I understand the prospect, I understand their problems, I understand their challenges, I understand where they are today, being able to build that gap of where they are to where they want to go. So understanding what the promised land looks like to looks like to them. And once I understand that, then I can give them the solution. But if I don't do any of that, and you, you'll just end up being a salesperson. Now, as far as being connected to yourself, 
So one of the biggest things I remember is I always ask myself, what cape are you wearing? Well, how do you see yourself in this world? Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself as just an average salesperson who got stuck in it? Because if you did, I would just say, quit, quit mm -hmm. now because you're going to lose and it's going to be painful. I promise you, it will be painful because the greatest thing about sales and the worst thing about sales is it's hard someday. <laughs> and it's and and the fact is just like the batters in the NLB, you're going to miss 80% of your shots. Yeah. But that's okay because the 20% you get are is, was your commission. And as long as you can know understand the art of what we're actually doing and what it is, you you, you can't you can't lose when you absolutely embrace what sales is and and why you are where you are and being able to step in so being connected to that and not being afraid or embarrassed but having confidence and conviction and clarity of what value you bring and you're actually you have the solution to people's problem mm -hmm. you have the solution like that's not a bad thing that's not mm -hmm. that's not it's a great thing it's a, it, it's it's a powerful thing mm -hmm. and if you're really good so we're talking now high level. If you're really good at asking the right questions and listening to what they're not saying, you actually have the power to transform people's lives. Mm -hmm. Literally yep. get them to do things that they never thought was possible so they can finally become the version of themselves that they never thought they could actually be. That's not sales to me. I call that transformation. Yeah, no, absolutely. And one of the things that's interesting that you mentioned, that thing about fear or reticence or whatever, is that you can, when when somebody calls you or connects with you uh, and says, you can tell pretty quickly whether they believe in their product, whether they're cool. excited, whether they, whether, and you can also get a sense of whether they expect you to engage in a conversation or yeah. whether they're expecting you just to say no. And to be honest, when you get those words, you think they're expecting you to say no, there's no real enthusiasm, all of that. It's all very, very transparent. The, it, you're talking, that's the energy we're talking about mm -hmm. right now, right? And so I always talk, yeah. it comes down like the three C's is your absolute certainty, clarity, and your conviction. Mm -hmm. And you don't get conviction without certainty and clarity. So what does that mean? Are you absolutely certain in who you are and certain in your product and certain what the mission is? Are you absolutely clear on what your product does, how it solves people's problems? Now, the turn on that. Are you absolutely certain that they're the right person for this product? Are mm. you absolutely clear? You have clarity that this product will solve that person's problem because you've actually stopped, you listen, and you understand where they are and where they want to go. Because when you do all of that, that's what you get something that you cannot teach, you cannot buy. And that's called conviction. And I would take anybody with 100% conviction over no skills any day than someone who has all the skills in the world and no conviction. Because conviction is the energy that people will buy and will see from you. And without it, you're going to be, it's going to be long days. It'll be long, yeah. long days. And there's been a lot of talk about, you know, authenticity. And, uh, you know, it's, I think that somebody just told me this morning, it's Merriam Webster's word of the year for 2023 or something. Authenticity, right? yeah. Authenticity. And the thing is, right, a lot of people, uh, I, I do feel a lot of people sort of when they cross the threshold, whether virtually or physically of their work, they sort of, okay, now I have to be this person and they put on the persona and whatever. And the reality is that if you're not being who you truly are, you're not going to be authentic. And and I think maybe more people need to be encouraged to be mm -hmm. who they really are and to say, like, there are many different ways of selling. There are many different types of people selling. If you go back to what you said, you know, with your, you know, your clarity, your conviction, your certainty, my goodness, you can be the biggest introvert in the world. But if you have those three things and you know exactly yeah. who you are, you can be the top salesperson. Some of the actually people think uh, it's funny you said that introvert, extrovert, because some people just think, mm -hmm. oh, extroverts are salespeople, introverts yep. are not. Actually, some of the biggest, best salespeople I've ever met are introverts. They mm -hmm. just know how to turn that on. And when you, when you, um, what did you mention before? Because I just slipped my mind. Um, oh, the authenticity. The authenticity. Of oh, my God. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is it's, you, you don't want to be the sleazy salesperson. You don't want to go underneath that, like that gap there, like that, 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 that mm -hmm. stigma then you got to be authentic because people like authentic, especially in this world. Like there's so much mistrust now in this world. Yeah. You can't go wrong being yourself. And here's what I've realized in this world. There's someone for everybody in this world. 
And you have to have the confidence in who you are as an individual. And that's, again, that connection I'm talking about to show up to the world and know, okay, who are my people? Who am I going to sell to? For an example, I remember when I was younger and I was like, I only cared about money. I didn't care about anything else. I cared about money. And I would take up any sales job. And like me, let's get real. Do I look like a construction worker? Do I look like a guy that's going to sell nuts and bolts? No. And I remember when I was trying to get a job with, I think, Syntas or something like that. Uh, and, and they sell nuts and bolts. And it was until the last minute where the sales manager like said, dude, I would hire you in a second. But you and I both know this is not your people. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And he's like, and how well do you think you, you do? And I said, probably not that well. Because yeah. eventually what would be happening? A, I'm not authentic to myself and authentic to what I'm selling. B, I'm going to be worn out because every day I'm showing up and being someone I'm not. Mm -hmm. how, how long can you go and fake it? The whole idea of fake it till you make it. How about just be real and yeah. ask the questions and yeah. step in with confidence? So I always tell people like no matter what job or whatever you're doing in sales, you got to make sure that you love what the offer is. You got to love what the solution is. You got to love the people you're speaking to day in and day out. Or again, it's going to be a grind. And that's why it's mm -hmm. not about the money. You'll do better elsewhere than just trying to grind it out. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I was, uh, you know, quote Oscar Wilde when he said, like, be yourself because everybody else is taken. Uh, so uh, it, it is incredibly important that you find who you are and that you be who you are all yeah. of the time, not just not just some of the time. And uh, and actually uh, picking up again on what you said is like, you know, when you could you do construction sales? Well, you probably could. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, as you said, not very successfully. But the other thing, too, is eventually or pretty quickly, the people you're selling to are going to go, eh, you don't really know much about this. You don't really yeah. know this business. You don't really like this business. I don't even know why you're here. Yeah, well, you're right. Because every industry too, like, oh, it has a language. There's a yeah. language you got to pick up. You got like, there's this energy you can pick up. Now, it's interesting because when I say that on one hand, I remember when I joined the pharmaceutical world. Now, I didn't know anything about pharmaceuticals sure. at all. And I grew to become the number one pharmaceutical sales rep in the country. But the reason I did that was, because I wasn't actually in love with pharmaceuticals, but I actually was in love with the people. I really enjoyed the people I was working with. So I had this common ground that I enjoyed building the relationships with the pharmacists. I enjoyed walking into the pharmacies and, and speaking to all the people behind it, the, like these real people every day, right? A lot, like 20, 30 people behind a pharmacy and you get to meet them all. So I enjoyed that so much. I've related what I loved about relationships connections and relationships. And I use that to fuel my goal. They knew I didn't care about the product, but that they didn't need me to care about the product because they needed me to support them on what they needed. And that's what I cared about is how can I help you grow your business? Not so much. How can I help you sell more pills? Yeah. And, and I think one of the other things that you touched on earlier that is, is very important as well is that understanding that, as you said, it's it's one thing you're 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 selling a, a product or solution, but you're also working with people who have a lot, you know, on the buyer side who have a lot invested in it, both personally and professionally. Because as you know, if you make the right decision on something, you can it can be career enhancing and it can yeah. help, as you said, take you to the next level. If you make a poor decision, it could be career limiting. So there's there's always this conflict, and everybody who's involved in the buying decision is like, how does this work for the company and how does this work for me? Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's just an alignment, right? Is, is, is if you don't know who you are, how is the prospect ever going to be able to trust you? So going back to mm -hmm. authenticity, right? If you don't know where you're going or what you're representing, how are you ever going to have that conviction to connect right with your mm -hmm. prospects? So again, a lot of, I see so many sales reps, they, they just miss it by a millimeter and it's only because they're just in the wrong industry or they're trying to go after a certain, like, you know, I'm going to use them for instance, like a real estate agent. I remember all my life, all of my entire life, people used to be like, Kayvon, you'd be the best real estate agent. You make all this money. And I remember going like, I probably would be an amazing real estate agent, but I don't want to be one. Yeah. I don't care how much money I can make. I, I have no love of the even idea of being a real estate agent. So why would I go down that road? But a lot of people would because their friends are telling them that, the yeah. society is telling them that, and they see everyone else making money. So they go chasing after this false dream. And guess what happens? It goes back to being authentic. Are you being authentic? Are you being in line with who you are and what you represent? No. And you wonder wondering why you fail. Just mm -hmm. like people go down the corporate world or people go down certain, they go down these lanes because they feel like they have this, this idea that society says, oh, you, well, you look good or you feel good. Well, no, mm -hmm. I, I go down the lane that I know I want to go down. 
Not what my parents told me, not what society tells me what I want to go down. Because I know when I'm being 100% authentic to myself, I can't fail. But if right. I try to be someone else, chances are I'm probably going to fail. Yeah. And and as you said, I'm just picking up again, that trust, that trust element is huge because I mean, if I have any doubts about you, if I don't really connect with you, if I don't really, if I'm not really feeling it, you know, the energy from you, as you said, the positive energy for you, then the likelihood of me trusting you is quite slim. So again, I mean, it's it's foundational to building trust, right? And how about this? How can anyone trust you if you don't trust yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's so it. trust starts. I remember listening to a mentor told me this. You know, when you drop a, like a coin, or you drop a rock in the water, you mm -hmm. have the ripple effect. That first ripple is you. The second one is your product. The third one is your clients. And if you don't trust yourself, how is the product or you are going to ever trust the product and how your clients going to ever trust you? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the golden rule, people do business with people they like. Yeah, yeah. And one one thing that I, from all of this, right, and this is, I think this is the biggest challenge that most people have across the board. And that's self-awareness. And self-awareness is, is, it's quite a difficult thing. I mean, it takes, it takes effort in order for you to be self-aware. It's a journey. Uh, you know, most of us probably wish we had gone through that journey, uh, completed that journey a lot, lot earlier in life, yeah. but, hey, better late than never. Uh, but in order to go, in order to uh, be what you're talking about, you have to go through a, a, a journey of self-awareness, uncovering who you are, who you're not, what you really believe and what you don't. And we live in a world today that's so distracted and so doesn't want you to spend any time thinking about yourself. Just here, oh, here, distract yeah. yourself, distract yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so just to, um, how, much do you th how much do you think self-awareness is at the root of a lot of this? I mean, uh, self-awareness is absolutely everything, especially mm -hmm. to your happiness, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, and I love what you're calling it to the journey. Some people call it journey. I call it the transformation. Mm -hmm. And the true transformation comes when you're willing. I always say this. Are you actually willing to die of any version of the person you are today so you can actually rebirth the person you know yourself to be? And the mm -hmm. question, right, most people have is they would not, they're not willing to do it. They're not actually willing to let go of their family. They're not willing to let go of their finances. They let go of their faith. Let go of their friends. They're not willing to do that for their future. And that's why they always get in this corner where they're not unhappy or they don't actually go and get to that next level in their lives because they're not willing to die of that version. So that self-awareness is when you actually die of that version. You sit and you ask the question, like, how can I be great or how can I be better? And you sit long enough until you hear the answer. Most people don't even sit and ask the question, let alone wait for the answer to come. Uh, yeah. So again, this is why I say sales is all, all this connection internally. And that connection comes with your faith in yourself, your belief in yourself. And when I use faith, I don't even mean God. I, I mean, faith in oneself, mm -hmm. faith in your faith and ability that you're going to be great, that you can show up, that you're going to be resilient, that you're going to be committed, that you're going to go down the road, that you're going to, no matter how many times you get knocked down, you're going to get back up mm -hmm. because that is in your DNA. I call it the winner's DNA. That's what I call it. Yeah, and 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 you're correct about you know that transformation, that journey, that the self awareness one. Like it's, it's not an easy one, but it's it's one that if you if you undertake it, then then it is it is truly transformational. And like you said, I mean, most people, you they can tell you everything that they don't want, right? But they can't tell you the one thing. They can't tell you the one thing they do want. Yeah. See, for me, it was funny when I when I was going through my journey. It's funny you said that. I was very, very clear on what I don't want. Mm -hmm. So even though I didn't know exactly what it was I needed or I wanted, I was so clear on what I didn't want that I knew I stayed away from that. Right. I mean, at least because if you're so clear on at least what you don't want, it gets you at least one step closer to what you do want. Most people aren't even clear on what they don't want, let alone being clear on what they actually do want. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, that's and I feel and I and I feel for people like that because I remember being lost like having all this desire and, 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 and energy, you want to call it, right? And all this stuff happening in you and you want more, but you just don't know where to harness it, right? Yeah. And I think it's about giving yourself the permission to let go. Yeah. Most people are afraid to let go. And you're never going to get that transformation. And I love what you said, uh, you know, most of us that have gone through it will say, I wish I would have went through it earlier. <laughs> yeah. Here. Saying, yeah. I'll tell you that. I wish I would have had this. But sometimes things happen for a reason. I totally believe it. And, and when it happens, 
to you, uh, you'll know. You'll you'll wake up a whole different person. Yeah, no, I, I I genuinely believe that most things in life happen at the right moment. If you if you continue to do the right things, put yourself in the right circumstances, sometimes things take longer than you would like. But it maybe that's. But I often think that's a good thing because it happens at at the right time. And uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I turn back the clock. Maybe I wasn't. I wouldn't have been ready for that journey or that transformation at the time. You're absolutely right. Even if you had it, maybe if I gave it to you, you weren't ready for it. You wouldn't have been able to understand it, own it. Exactly. Um, yeah. Well, listen, Kayvon, this has been this has been truly fascinating. Thank you so much for this and great advice there for salespeople is look inwards first. OK, look, look inwards here. first and get that build that solid foundation within yourself. And then everything else will start to become a lot more, a lot more, e a lot easier, but a lot more enjoyable, I would say. Yeah. And easier because you'll and be in flow. Yeah. Well, again, thanks, Kayvon. Thank you for thanks watching for and listening. Me. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you.